Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at a lead code problem and the problem's name is maximum profit in job scheduling. So in this question, there are n jobs where every job is scheduled to be done from start time to end time. And after doing that job, you get a profit. All these three values are represented in three different arrays, start time, end time and profit. And all of them are going to be of the same length, right? Obviously, which is n. And the task is to return the maximum profit. You can such that no two jobs in the subset with overlapping time range. At one point of time, you can't do two simultaneous jobs. So let's take this example and see how we can solve this question. So let's take the first example. I've drawn the same arrays here. So there are n jobs n is the length of the arrays. That is four. So all the arrays will have the same length of four. As they represented this, the x axis is going to be is going to be the time. So the first job is going to start from one to three, and it is going to have a profit profit of fifty. The second job is going to start from two to four, and its profit is ten. The third job starts from three to five, so it starts from three to five. So third job has three to five of profit forty, and this is seventy. So first job has one to three profit fifty. Second job from two to four profit ten. Third job from three to five profit forty. And fourth job from three to six profit seventy. And the main point is that we can do only one job once we start a job. So until you finish it, you can't start a new job. So if I pick job one, so profit is initially zero. I start at one and finish at three. So profit is fifty because I did the first job. I get fifty profit. No, I can't do the second job if I did the first job because it finishes at three, but it's this job starts at two. Since this is a overlap, we can't do the second job. Now we have two options. We can do one plus three. So if I do one plus three, fifty, and the third job's profit is forty, so it will get ninety. If I do one plus four, I get fifty plus seventy and one twenty. So this is if I do first job. So if I do the second job, I start at two. And finish at four, and I get profit ten. I can't do the first job along with it because there is a overlap with first job, so I can't do it. I can't do the third job because it starts at three, but the second job ends at four. So similarly, I can't do the fourth job too because second job ends at four and and fourth job starts at three. So if I pick job two, my max profit is ten. And similarly, if, uh, for the third job, we already found out if only third job I get profit forty. If I do three plus one, I get profit ninety, which is already covered in this case. And I can't do three plus four because third job start and fourth job start the same. Or more accurately, third job ends at five, but fourth job end starts at three. So there's an overlap. We can't do three and four together. So out of all this, we get profit of one twenty, which is one plus fourth job together. So one twenty is our output, which is expected here. So in this approach, you know you're either not picking that job or you're picking it with a second job. And second job's condition is that end of current job should be less than or equal to start of next job. So this is the condition which will move our search further. So to implement this, it is very important to sort our input array in ascending order. We can't just sort one of the arrays. We have to sort all the three arrays in ascending order, right? So instead of sorting all the three arrays separately, we can make a new array. So I'll make a new list which has size of n, representing the n jobs. And each list element is going to have three uh, separate values. So I iterate through the n from start to end, and I make a combination of start, comma, end, comma, profit as one element. So the first element is going to be one comma three comma fifty. The second element is going to be two comma four comma ten. The third element is going to be three comma five comma forty, and the fourth element is going to be three comma six comma seventy. And now we are going to sort this list. With ascending orders of start time. So since this is already sorted, one, two, three, comma three is already sorted. But for other examples, it will be sorted in ascending order of the list. So if we sort only based on the start times at the zeroth index, the rest of the two parameters associated with it will be along with it. So there is no need of sorting the other two arrays. So that is the main reason of creating a new array. And as I said, we need to check this condition that start time of the next job. Should be compared with the end time of the current job. For this, we have to implement binary search because it has a time complexity of O of log n. And to find the index of the next job based on this condition, we will have to override the start time array with the values after sorting the list. 
So after start sorting the list, we will get the sorted values, pick it 0th position elements, which is the start time and override it with the start times of that element. So here in this case, since it is already sorted, we will get the same array. But for other cases, after making the list with this combo and sorting it based on the 0th index of start time, we have to again override this start time array to implement binary search because binary search will be using this array instead of this list. We have to make sure that this is sorted in ascending order too. So that can be easily done by iterating through the list and picking the zeroth element of every element in that list and adding it into the list. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 3 will be added into the list and override the array. We will implement the recursion based on this condition if we are skipping the current job or taking the current job with the next index and based on that we will get our max profit and finally to avoid a recursive calls and recursive calculation we will implement memoization which is a simple step of the size n where n has the constraints of 5 into 10 power 4 plus 1 so this is the max constraints array I will show you how to implement memoization during coding. So let's implement these steps in a Java program. Coming to the function given to us, this is the function name and these are the three arrays. And the return type is an integer representing the maximum profit we can obtain. So our first step, as I said, we have to create a single array where each element consists of these three values. So I'm going to create a list. So this is a list of lists where every element inside this is a list consisting of these three values. Now let's find the n that is the length of any of the array. Now let's iterate from starting to end of this length. Now we have to form a single list. I'm going to create an array list and in that list I'm going to add one value at a time. Now inside this list I have to create a value which has all these three values. So first I will add start time into this of ith index. Since we are going to use a single loop to iterate through all these three arrays, we are going to use the i pointer to access all the three arrays. So ith element start time will be added first. And then I'm going to add the end time of that ith element. And then I'm going to add the profit of that ith element. Now this is a single list, right? We have to add all these lists values into the bigger list that is jobs. So jobs that add off that single list, which is current job. Now I will sort this list based on start times, which is at the zeroth index position. For that, I'm going to use the comparator. So jobs dot sort comparator dot comparing end method. And here for the for every element, I'll pick the zeroth index. So this will sort the list in ascending order of start times. Now the start times are in ascending order. Let's use the same array to place all these ascending order start times into this. So I will override this array. So for that I'm going to use a for loop and iterate from starting to end. So start time of i will be overridden with the start times of these jobs present. So from the all the jobs, I'm going to get the i job and I'm going to get the start time which is at the 0th index. Now we will write the function to find a max profit which is a recursive function and that will return the output. I'm going to name it find max profit which will take the entire jobs list, the start times, this is an array and the entire length which is standing for the number of jobs and we will start with the 0th index element. Now let's define this function. So this function will return an integer because this is an integer. So we have to return an integer for this function too. We named it find max profit and the parameters is a list of lists of jobs. So this is the first parameter. The second time is a start time array. The third variable is the total number of jobs which is n. And the fourth variable is the index. I'm going to name it position. Since this is the recursive function, first I'm going to write the exit condition. Since we are starting at the zeroth index, so once the position reaches the last index, that is the length, we will end our iteration. So if position is equal to n, we will return zero, which means we iterated through all the lists and calculated the max profit. 
so after iterating through all the values we'll return zero now as we discussed we are going to have two options that in the dp array first we are going to pick the ith job or we are going to leave it so to pick the next job we need to find the index position of the next job we have to find the next index position by implementing the binary search so we create another function called next job index find next jobs index so this is going to take the start time array and the previous jobs ending time so I'll name it last ending time now this is a classic binary search we did take two pointers start pointer is at zero and end pointer is at the end so start time dot length minus one and the next index is at start time dot length so I'm going to name this variable next index which will be returned as the output so this binary search will happen until start and end and pointers cross each other. So while start is less than or equal to end. Now inside this iteration, we first have to calculate the mid. So mid is start plus end minus start by two. So by finding out the mid index using this formula, you can avoid the overflow condition. So we have to pick the job whose start time is greater than or equal to the current job's end time. So if current job is mid time, right? So start time of mid is greater than or equal to the last job's ending time. Then we set that next index pointer to mid and we move the end pointer. And in the else block, if this condition is failing, move the start pointer to mid plus one. And outside the while loop we will return the next index so this next index is an integer variable this will give us the next index job which i'm going to call inside this max profit function so next index this function call which is going to take the start time array as the first parameter and the current jobs end time current jobs end time is jobs dot get of i we got the current job from the entire jobs list and end time is present at the first index so get of one and this will be passed as a current job end time now we have the next index now we have to calculate the max profit so I create a variable max profit which will be returned as the output so to create max profit i'm going to pick the max of two things so first thing we are going to skip the job so i'll make the recursive call and place the entire jobs list, entire start time, n will be the same and we are going to just move the index to the next iteration so position plus one. We skip the current job. So if we pick the current job, we have to make another recursive call. So jobs will remain same, start time array will remain same, n will remain same but position we have to pick the next index position which we calculated of the next eligible job and to this we have to add the current jobs profit. So current jobs profit is jobs dot get of i will give you the current job from the entire job. Profit is present at the second index or so get of two. So this is the recursive approach. So if you submit this approach, you will get a TLE error because there are lots of repeated calculations with this recursive calls. So you have to implement memoization. So memoization, you know, is the process where you store previous uh, calculated values in an array. And if that value is already present inside the array, you can use it else we have to calculate the max profit and store it store that value back in the memoization dp array so that it can be used in the next iteration onwards so to declare the dp array we first have to know how many jobs are present there are 5 into 10 power 4 jobs so we have to create 5 into 10 power 4 plus 1 jobs array because index position start from zero so i created globally i'm going to name it memo and declare the size as 5 into 10 power 4 plus 1 so 5 into 10 power 4 plus 1 and in the main function i will fill the dp array with minus 1 values so i'm going to use arrays dot fill of the memo array with value minus 1 so initially all the values inside will have minus 1 because we have to differentiate if that value has been already calculated or not while accessing the memo array if minus one is present at that index, it means we haven't calculated that value. And if any other value other than minus one is present, it means we already calculated that value and we can use it. Before making the recursive calls, 
let us check if that value is already calculated so if memo of the index position is position right so for that position if that value is already calculated like i said we can differentiate if that value is not equal to minus one you already calculated that value so you can directly return that value from the memo array and if that value is not calculated so we calculated here and we add that max profit into this position so memo of position equal to max profit so that we can use it for the next time that's it now let's try to run the code so here it is not i right we have to get the position because i is not present so get of position and that jobs end time is at index position one and here too it's not i we have the position present here so that jobs profit we are getting at index position two and here there is a typo right we have to change the end pointer to mid minus one right we are changing the start pointer to mid plus one so end will be mid minus one now let's try to run the code the test cases are being accepted let's submit the code and a solution has been accepted so the time complexity of this approach is going to be o of n log n log n because we are implementing binary search and o of n because we are iterating through the all the three arrays using a single for loop so the total time complexity o of n log n and the space complexity is o of n because we are using a memo array of size 5001 which is of the length of the number of jobs that's it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video